Hello, welcome to our channel. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss about uh, biomolecules. Okay, so this is the unit one and uh, section B. Okay, so in this section B, we are going to discuss mainly about the biomolecules. So, what is meant by biomolecule? So, biomolecule means organic compound. In the section A of this uh, of this unit, we have discussed about uh, organic, inorganic, and so on. So, organic means chemical compound which contains carbon that is known as organic. So, if you take the example of amino acids, the structure of amino acid is this. Okay, so amino acid, so H and also R group. Okay, can you see the carbon in this molecule? Yes, you can see carbons in this molecule. So, if the carbon is present in a certain or in the particular molecule, that is known as organic. So, hence the amino acid is a organic sugars are organic proteins are organic lipids are organic. These all are the organics. It means we can consider that all biomolecules are organic or you can call it as an organic compound. Generally, these biomolecules are produced in the living organism. So, what is meant by living organism? Anything which has the reproduction, respiration, excretion and the such kind of uh, biological properties or biological functions that is known as or, or that is known as living organism. You can take the example for a uh, bacteria, you can take the example of human beings or animals, anything that they are known as living organisms. In these living organisms, you can see important roles of the biomolecules. So, biomolecules are sugars, amino acids, nucleic acids, nucleotides, fatty acids, and so on. These all are the biomolecules. Okay, next is the macromolecule. So, what is the difference between the biomolecule and macromolecule? So, these amino acids, amino acids, sugars, these all are the biomolecules. And the, these biomolecules are monomeric units. Monomeric means single individual unit. So, let us know this amino acid, this is amino acid, amino acid, and amino acid. So, they are joined together with a polypeptide chain or polypeptide that, is, that makes the formation or production of the protein. So, if these monomeric units are linking together by a bond, it may be any type of bond, whether it may be equivalent or polypeptide or glycosidic whatever it may be if they are joining together to form a big larger molecule that is known as a macro molecule macro and molecule macro means much larger molecule means a chemical compound a larger chemical compound that is formed with individual monomeric units that is known as a macro molecule okay so you can take the example of protein if you take the protein how they are made up of they are made up of amino acids okay they are made up of amino acids so the protein is a macromolecule next polysaccharide polysaccharide means let us take the example of starch okay what is meant by starch the glucose molecule are joined together by a bond okay so these the glucose molecules are joined with a bond so larger a chain of the glucose molecules are is going to form a, a starch so it is a polysaccharide poly means many saccharon means sugar okay so the polysaccharide is also a macromolecule nucleic acids they are formed by the joining or uh, joining of nucleotides like nitrogen bases sugars and phosphate groups so next lipids they are formed with the fatty acids so these all are the macromolecules that is formed by the accumulation or joining of the biomolecules individual monomeric units so what are the chemical compounds that is present in the um, uh, biomolecules See, especially we all know that they are organic if it is a organic especially obviously the carbon should be present carbon is there hydrogen nitrogen oxygen phosphorus and sulfur these all are the important components that is present in it okay so if, if you see here the carbon hydrogen nitrogen and oxygen these are the main important chemical element in any biomolecule. So they make up, they makes up about 90 percentage of the biomolecules. Okay. So these all are very, very important. So next, this is a small information about uh, amino acids. So next, next we will go to the amino acid. So amino acid, what is meant by amino acid? Generally, the amino acid contains two groups. So the word itself says about it. Okay an amino amino group and acidic group so this is a chemical structure c co minus and nh3 okay this nh3 
the amino group the co minus is a carboxylic group and it is attached to the hydrogen and also functional group or you can call it as a side chain that is r so you can see here this is there is a amino group there is a carboxylic group so hence we can call it as amino acid okay so these amino acids are monomeric unit that make up the polypeptide chain so we have discussed just now the amino acids are joined together to form a micromolecule that micromolecule is known as a protein so how the polypeptide chain is formed so actually what is a polypeptide chain so you can here you can see so this is a carbon in the in the amino acid this is the structure of the amino acid so coo minus and nh3 amino group hydrogen and also functional group or you can call it as a side chain so this is the amino acid and this amino acid and also let us draw another amino acid okay so coo minus and nh3 okay so this is here is a side chain okay how they are going to form how the polypeptide chain is formed polypeptide uh, instead of calling, calling as a polypeptide chain you can call it as a polypeptide so polypeptide or you can call it as a peptide bond so how the peptide bond is formed the peptide bond is formed between these two amino acids so by a formation known as elimination or dehydration reaction h2o water will be eliminated so here you can see c o and also here is the main important bond that is the polypeptide bond so nh so nh alpha carbon and this is a is alpha carbon that is a side chain here is a side chain and here here is a hydrogen and here is a side chain not the hydrogen this is not the side chain yes this is the amino group so what you can see here here the two hydrogens two hydrogens from the amino group and one oxygen one oxygen from the carboxylic acid okay from the carboxylic acid is removed leading to formation of h2o here you can see losing of one oxygen lead to the co here you can see the co and here losing of two hydrogens from nh3 leading to the formation of only uh, only the presence of only one hydrogen so nh so this bond is known as a peptide bond so the peptide bond is present in this way so another amino acid join will form uh, another amino acid will join in this way and here also another amino acid join in this way and so on so this is the formation this is the method how the peptide bond is formed so if there is more than one peptide bond that is known as polypeptide bond poly means many peptide means peptide bond so polypeptide you can call it the polypeptide chain or polypeptide bonds okay so of a protein and around 500 amino acids are present in the nature in the nature there are around 500 amino acids so 500 amino acids are present. and around 500 amino acids are present in the nature so these 500 amino acids make up uh, out of these 500 amino acids there are only 20 amino acids are there, are there in the uh, in the biological system or in the living organisms so the question is out of 500 why only why only uh, 20 are there okay why only 20 amino acids are there in the body of organism or any biological system okay so the reason is simple so out of 500 out of 500 only 20 20 is present why because the genetic code okay genetic code codes for only 20 amino acids so due to this reason due to the genetic code uh, coding only for 20 amino acids the 20 amino acids are present in the proteins or in the biological system okay so leave about the 500 amino acids they are not useful for us okay, out of 500 only 20 are important so the chemical elements are uh, that is that are present in the amino acid generally that we have discussed now in the previous carbon hydrogen hydrogen uh, carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen these are the main chemical elements present in the amino acid and you also you have to note that there is a sulfur in the cysteine you can see the sulfur atom also okay so the chemical groups what are the chemical groups just now as we have discussed there is a presence of a carboxylic acid there is a presence of amino group and there is a presence of side chain and there is a presence of hydrogen okay these all are the main chemical groups present in it so this is one of the reason we are going to call, call it as alpha carbon so what is meant by alpha carbon alpha carbon means uh, the carbon which is bonded to 
four different uh, different chemical atoms or four different groups that is known as alpha carbon okay so let us take the example let us take the example this is the general structure of the carbon okay the general structure of the amino acid okay so here is a carboxylic acid nh amino okay and here is the hydrogen and here is the r group or functional group or you can write a side chain so can you see here this carbon this carbon attached to the carboxyl group nitrogen group hydro uh, amino group and hydrogen and also r are they different or same obviously they are different different this is different this is different this is different and also this is different so this carbon attached to different uh, different groups four different groups so in that case you can call it as alpha carbon alpha carbon or chemical in chemistry you can call it as a chiral carbon chiral carbon means the carbon which is bound to four different uh, four different groups or four different atoms that is known as uh, alpha amino acid or or you can call it as called as a chiral carbon why because it's a carbon carbon atom bonded to four different uh, uh, groups hence it is known as chiral carbon okay so why only four why only four what happens if there is five what happens if it is bonded to five it is not at all possible why carbon bonds with four different groups with four bonds only so this we have discussed in the in the first section a of section a lectures okay unit one section a why because why carbon bonds only with four different uh, uh, groups or why it will forms only four different uh, four bonds only why because it's valency its valency is four okay if the valency of the carbon is four it can bond with four different atoms or four different groups or four different or same atoms okay so only four bonds can be formed carbon forms only four bonds why because its valency is four it can share four electrons with other things to form a bond okay that is also mainly or maximum there is a formation of a covalent bond okay this is formed due to the based on the sharing sharing of electrons this is formed by the one this is a electron shared by atom a this is atom b so they are going to share one one electron leading to the formation of a chemical bond okay what is bond bond is nothing but the force of attraction the force of attraction between Two between two atoms that is known as uh, bond. Ba bond is not, it's not about a drawing a line. Okay, just to represent a bond, we are drawing drawing a line. But in reality, the force the in reality the bond means the force of attraction between two atoms. Okay. So next, alpha amino acid that we have discussed now. The alpha means bonding with four different groups. And except glycine, except glycine, every amino acid is chiral or every amino acid is alpha amino acid. Why? Because if you see the glycine, okay, CO minus NH3, okay, so hydrogen and also R, okay. So here you can see the R side chain in amino acid is simple H, okay. So count here, how many different atoms are there? One, two, three and three. Why? Because the above is hydrogen below is also hydrogen we don't know which one is function group, which one is a side chain so in that case there is only three different different uh, three different groups are there so in this case we cannot accept glycine as a alpha amino acid why because it has two hydrogens it has two hydrogens so this is only the reason okay, it should have the four different groups which are four different groups it has only three different groups okay and alpha amino acids are optically active we will discuss about this optical uh, optical nature of amino acids in coming lectures okay so next uh, next is isoelectric so what is meant by isoelectric point so this is nothing but the electrical neutral property of an amino acid is known as isoelectric point so let us discuss in detail okay at physiological ph at physiological ph mean here we, we will draw here we'll write something here so at physiological pH, pH means around 7, okay, at pH 7, the amino acid, the, uh, the amino acid will be at neutral, okay, at neutral, what is meant by neutral, okay, so here at physiological pH, the carboxylic acid is going to lose electron, here CO minus, CO minus carboxylic acid is going to lose, uh, lose its proton, not, uh, not electron, it is going to lose proton H, and also, after losing of carboxylic acid, if the pH increases even more, 
beyond the 7 till 7 carboxylic acid is going to lose ph it is going to lose one proton and after the ph 7 nh3 amine acid is going to lose one proton as a result it is going to it is going to form okay it is going to uh, they are going to form a uh, ions okay so the amphoteric amphoteric nature means the ability of the molecule to donate or accept a proton here the amino acids are ready to donate so donate a proton or accept a proton based on the physiological ph okay so we will uh, discuss something else uh, we'll, so that you can clear your concept okay is this So here we are going to discuss about uh, Zwitter ion. So what is meant by Zwitter ion? Zwitter ion means. So here we have we have seen the isoelectric point. Let us let us understand with the help of a reaction. Okay. So here the alpha carbon C O O minus and also N H three. So hydrogen and also side chain. Okay. So this is the P H is equal to pi pi means isoelectric point so pi means isoelectric point so if you increase the acid if you increase the ph okay it means the ph is greater than isoelectric point so what happens alpha carbon co minus okay. here the co minus is there why because already carboxyl acid has uh, carboxyl acid has lost its proton and nh nh Instead of NH3, you have to write NH2, okay? So, instead of NH3, you can see there is a NH2, okay? NH2, okay? Hydrogen over it and also oxide chain here. So, if the pH is greater than the isoelectric point, the amino acid is going to lose its proton. So, as a result, NH3 turns into NH2 okay so here let us see here what happens if there is less pH okay so the pH is less than less than isoelectric point so what happens COOH it means the carboxylic acid is going to gain one proton okay so here it is going to gain one proton before it it has CO minus so if the pH is low what it is going to gain one proton so as a result and also in the same way the NH3 is same okay before also there is NH3 and after also NH3 so here hydrogen and also side chain it means what mean, what is meant by pH is less than uh, pi it means it is acidic in nature the solution is acidic in nature this is neutral and this is basic in nature okay so if, it means if the basicity increases both groups carboxylic acid group and also amino group is going to lose lose their proton okay so at physiological ph if the neutral if the ph is neutral the carboxylic acid is going to lose proton but amino acid is going to remain its proton at a lower ph that is the acidic solution the amino acid is going to retain its ph but the c the amino group is going to retain its uh, proton but the COO, the carboxylic acid is going to gain one proton. It means CO minus is going to turn into COOH. Addition of one proton leads to the formation of COOH from the COO minus. Okay, this is about amphoteric nature. Okay, it is it, the amino acid has the ability to lose one proton or gain protons. Okay, here is the gaining, here is the losing. Okay, so this is about isoelectric. Uh, this is known as isoelectric point okay and next the group the group is proton acceptor the amino group here you can see the amino group is proton acceptor and carboxylic acid is donor okay so this is the main thing over here and next is a zwitter ion so what is meant by zwitter ion so first of all we have to understand about what is meant by ion so in the in the previous classes also we have discussed about ion okay so what is meant by ion ion means anything which has a charge charge over it that is known as ion okay let us see here so if it contains negative charge or positive charge that is known as ion for example sodium na plus okay and also cl minus 
so it is has a charge it has a charge what is the charge here is a plus charge here is a negative charge so if they have the charge that is known as ion okay there's a electrically it is a positive charge electrically electrically it is a negative charge okay that is known as ion here we are calling it as zwitter ion it means it has a molecule having a both positive and negative charges here you can see the amino acid okay amino acid has co minus it has a negative charge and also amino group okay nh3 plus here there is a plus charge and here is a minus charge this is the reason we are we are calling the amino acid as zwitter ion it has both positive and negative charges hence the electrically pro electrical property of this acid is neutral it has a neutral electric charge okay so this is about a zwitter ion and next is the abbreviation abbreviation of the amino acid so what is meant by abbreviations so what is the main importance of the abbreviation okay for example in the computer system how to enter the amino acids okay so if we have complete yeah, alanine like uh, if you see the a l a n i n e alanine so it is a big word okay instead of writing alanine if you write a l a it is a little bit uh, less it is going to take less space and less data and if you write instead of alanine a l a if you write only single letter that is known as even more simple okay so for the benefit in the protein data bank writing the polypeptide chain of an a protein we are adapted such kind of abbreviation okay abbreviation that is nothing but three letter and also one letter abbreviations that is given for the amino acids for our convenience okay convenience and also convenience in the systems okay that is uh, protein data bank and so on okay so we are going to learn about alphabets so what is meant by alphabet that is already we have studied in our uh, schools in the elementary education but here for our biochemist for the biochemistry okay the alpha the amino acid the letter for the alphabet is a to z only the 20 20 alphabets are there okay 20 alphabets are there in a biochemistry that is especially in case of amino acids so that is a so one letter abbreviation a for alanine the three letter abbreviation is a l a so the name is alanine okay so the next b there is no b in the biochemistry okay there is no b alphabet in the biochemistry in case of amino acids next c c for cysteine by s okay c y s t e i n e okay cysteine so next d d for aspartate the road a s p a s p a r t a t e aspartate okay next e e for glutamic acid or glutamate u okay glutamate and also it is glutamate uh, the, sp the spelling is g l u t a m a t glutamate so f means phenyl alanine phenyl alanine p letter word p h e p h e n y l a l a n i n e phenyl alanine so g for for glycine okay g, uh, g the three letter word is gly okay gly c i n e glycine h for histidine h i s okay histidine okay so i for isoleucine the three letter word is i l e okay isoleucine l u c i n e isoleucine so j there is no j in the amino acids so k for lysine okay l y s okay l y s i n e lysine okay so l for l for leucine okay l e u okay l e u c i n e leucine m there is no m in the in the biochemistry n for n for aspargin a s n okay so m for m for methionine okay i forgot it m for methionine m e t methionine m e t h i o n i n e methionine so next is aspargin a s p a r i n e so o there is no o in uh, in a biochemistry and also p for proline p r o p r o l i n e okay so next q there is no q in the biochemistry okay so q for uh, there is no q in the biochemistry and also r r what the r is a r g arginine a r g 
ए आर जी आई एन आई एन ई आर जी एन ओके तो नेक्स्ट एस फॉर सेराइन एस सी आर आई एन ई सेराइन टी फॉर ट्रियोलिन टी एच आर टी एच आर ई ओ एन आई एन ई ट्रियोलिन यू देर इज नो यू इन दायोकेमिस्ट्री एम एन एसिड पी फॉर वैलाइन वी ए एल टी ए एल आई एन ई वैलाइन तो डब्ल्यू फॉर ट्रिप्टोफैन टी आर टी ओके टी आर वाई पी टी ओ ट्रिप्टो पी एच एन ट्रिप्टोफैन ओके तो एक्स देर इज नो एक्स वाई फॉर टाइरोसिन टी वाई आर वाई आर ओ एस आई नी टाइरोसिन जेड देर इज नो जेड इन द अमेनो एसिड्स ओके सो दीज आर ट्वेंटी अमेनो एसिड्स दैट कोड दैट आर कोड फॉर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द प्रोटीन्स ओके so we are going to discuss about the protein structure and also how they are formed and everything and from the in the next lecture we are going to start start with the structures of the amino acids stereo stereo isomerism classification and structure and so on okay and i hope this lecture is helpful to you and also we can subscribe to our channel and your subscription motivates us to do more educational content like this and like the video share and comment so provide your valuable suggestions and about the lesson and also suggestions on it and our next lesson will be classification structure of the amino acids and also protein so on okay so see you in the next lecture